For more on the world fight against uh, tuberculosis, I'm joined by Mike Reed. He's an assistant professor in the School of Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. Sir, can you give us a picture, give us a sense of where we are in the fight against TB globally? Has it been eradicated anywhere? Yeah, in, in short, no. Uh, TB continues to be the number one infectious disease killer globally responsible for more deaths than any other infectious disease. I guess the good news is that over the last 10 years, we, we have seen substantial declines in, in deaths related to TB, and yet the, the rate of decline is still, still very slow, considering this is a treatable, preventable, curable disease. So in answer to your question, no, we haven't eradicated the disease. There are certain countries where we've seen a good decline, but globally, it's still the number one infectious disease killer. So why has... Why have some countries made substantial progress towards uh, eradicating or ending this epidemic and others have not? Yeah, there isn't a simple answer to that. I think one of the important uh, determinants of, of success has been that s many countries have, have improved healthcare generally and that has led to declines in TB. Um, certain parts of the world have been disproportionately affected by the HIV epidemic, which has fueled the TB uh, disease spread as well. Um, so n no simple answer, but certainly access to healthcare is probably the biggest driver of improvements in, in TB outcomes at a country level. So some argue that it would be good economics to, to do more regarding prevention for governments around the world, because think about it, if you prevent the disease, uh, it would cost much less than having to deal with it uh, when it breaks out or when they have to spend large uh, amount of financial resources to treat the patients. That's absolutely correct. Uh, TB, investing in TB represents one of the best returns on investment in, out of any global health strategy. It's estimated that if we fail to respond to the epidemic, it will cost the global economy $1 trillion between now and 2030. And in India, for example, every year that they don't achieve declines in TB costs the Indian economy $30 billion a year. So there's huge incentive to address this from an economic point of view. But let me not understate the, the importance of the moral importance of addressing TB. It, it exacts tremendous suffering on, on individuals that fall ill with TB, not to, not to mention the financial costs on, on those suffering and their families. So there's a, definitely a moral imperative to address this curable preventative disease. Are there any good practices or best practices, would you say, that uh, you think are worth noting and uh, governments or NGOs or international organizations around the world should pay attention to? Yeah, so in a report that we published just this last week in The Lancet, we emphasized that the fact that there are a number of proven strategies that could be implemented at scale now that will be instrumental in ending the epidemic. Importantly, globally, we're failing to detect between 35 and 40 percent of all people who fall ill with TB. That's about 4 million people a year. Increasing access to TB diagnostics and treatment for, for those who are presenting with TB symptoms is crucial. There are also many, many millions of people that are at risk for TB people with, living with HIV, people in prisons, children under the age of five. And it's essential that they have access to TB preventive uh, treatments uh, to, to ensure that they don't develop TB disease. I think the other key thing, though, is to emphasize that th there is an urgent need for greater investment in TB research and development. We're still reliant on a diagnostic test that's 125 years old. We're still using drugs that are 30, 35 years old, and, and, and we can do better uh, with sufficient investment in, in the right research and development to, to secure better diagnostics and treatment. The final thing just to emphasize, you know, from an R&D perspective is, is the, the reality that an effective vaccine would be truly game-changing and, and is the surest way to end the, the global epidemic. We don't have one of those right now, and an urgent investment of funds is necessary to secure an effective vaccine. Wow, testing method that has been used for 100 years? Well, more, so more than 100, more than 100 years. years. It's pretty amazing. Um, but it's easy to say that uh, more resources need to be allocated uh, in R&D and other items, but where does this money come from? Right. Uh, you know, right now, most of the funds for research and development comes from the U.S., and I think it, there is a growing reality that to end the epidemic, there needs to be global collective action, and that means that 
middle income and high income countries that aren't investing in TB, R&D need to pony up. Um, and, and so in the report, we call on countries like Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa to increase their investment in TB and R&D in order to secure the new tools that are necessary to end the epidemic. Everybody can do more um, to uh, uh, secure the, the right technologies to, to drive down the incidence and mortality that, that result from TB. Mike Reed, Assistant Professor at the University of California, San Francisco, thank you so much for your expertise.